Hi guys, this is Ranger Rob from the Ranger Rob Country Living Channel and how are you doing today? Hope you're having a great day. So this video, I'm going to get right to the point. And uh, I was watching uh, the Sprague River Homestead, I think it is. They're down in southern Oregon. And uh, they've become pretty good friends. Uh, I've yet to go down and see their place, but uh, I really like them. They're good people. And uh, they've definitely are homesteading much more realistic than we, me and Sherry are. But they brought up a good, a good subject that I, I want to talk about is uh you know i came from arizona so arizona was is still fairly red state and uh was easy going and and it has a high population so surprisingly enough uh there's still a lot of freedoms and liberties there but it's hot and then we had this opportunity to come back to oregon and like the sprague river folks you know they have family and stuff like that and so we had connections here, so, um, and plus we're doing caregiving. Uh, they, they come back here and we had the opportunity to buy a five acre place. Um, and we were already in the, uh, being more self-reliant and, uh, and prepping, that it just made sense to say, let's go ahead and come back to Central Oregon and uh, really take our uh, self-reliance to a higher level. And we could do it with five acres. But, uh, the world's different than the 20 years ago when I lived here before with five acres and uh, not too much has changed except cost um, but there's definitely a war between the West and the East uh, the liberals uh, it's and, and she was bringing it up too is uh, don't have a comprehension of where their food comes from and how it's done and how it's processed and they're passing regulations over there that are ridiculous um, uh, with, with you know, like guns for example if you live out in a hundred acres or more and stuff you may have tr trouble with uh, predators and stuff and sometimes you need to have a gun ready to uh, take that predator out and having uh, things all locked up and separated in the whole works with the new laws they have here coming through for gun laws uh, uh, there should have been some kind of exception to property owners or someone that have to fend off uh, predators and the fact that hey if someone breaks into your house I'm not gonna go up to them and say can you guys hold on a minute I need to get everything unlocked before I can come out and, and shoot you <laughs> anyway uh, and you can bet that their guns aren't locked up Anyway, but when it comes to the animals, they're trying to pass things like you can't butcher an animal till it dies naturally and things like that. And, and that's ridiculous. Um, it's just so unrealistic. And yet a lot of people are taking it seriously. And yes, I'm fighting the wind again. And uh, it seems like the battle on being a homesteader is, is getting tough in Oregon. And o Washington, too, has got to be crazy. And of course, all these good states that we've had, uh, 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 Montana, Idaho, well, they got all those liberals coming in from different states, running around, running away from all the rules and regulations, only to start it up again. <laughs> it's like um, too many people want to tell other people how to do stuff. Uh, freedom and liberty is a two-way street. I could have a neighbor in my five acres next to me that has a collection of cars or makes a lot of noise and stuff and if they're all within the, the rules or laws of the area it's none of my business because um, freedom and liberty means you accept the freedoms and liberty of other people too so it's not my place to tell someone how to live their lives unless they're breaking the law so to understand freedom and liberty means also tolerance. Um, and so that's a thing that seems to be, be being slipped away. Tolerance is important in order for freedom and liberty to work. Because you have to accept the fact that your neighbor or other people 
may be doing things differently or may be louder or may have different things on their property that you may not like but you need to accept you need to uh, uh, tolerate and so you know their discussion is where do you go where can you go and can you keep running and so uh, will it get better and uh, so here's you know there's one scenario where shit hits the fan or things really get tough and then some of those city folks are gonna realize what they've done and reverse some of the things that they've done not realizing the damage that they've done to farmers and homesteaders that could be one scenario the other could be that they regulate the heck out of us and everything is a, a corporate level including farming and food and we all know that's not going to be good so they're even talking about maybe you need to move to another country and uh, I know I haven't really found one that I uh, I mean I've looked into that I've looked into Belize I've looked into Mexico and all that stuff and uh, you know and the, the other big factor you gotta put in mind is you know do you have family ties uh, if Sherry and I were to relocate we couldn't we couldn't even think about it until her uh, and this sounds bad but you know we're her mother's caretaker I don't think she'd be too thrilled about assisted living in uh, Costa Rica <laughs> I don't know so uh, I got a feeling that like for us we'll continue to do what we're doing and, and be as self-reliant as possible and it's going to come to it because we're being forced into it to bend the rules um, don't ask don't tell or you know uh, you know we'll probably get our hand slapped for you know maybe we didn't store all of our weapons in the right place or and follow those rules completely but uh really it's going to get to uh homesteaders living in in a gray world and uh uh just do things until you're caught <laughs> that's a terrible thing to to be saying but it's true and uh If I was a young homesteader and uh, you know like for example we have regulations here where we're at uh, they're ordinances so we can't have certain animals and uh, you know so but that's okay because at our age um, we have to do homesteading that makes sense to us that we can sustain as we get older and uh, to have too big a place would be uh, not a good thing for Sherry and I but uh, having our rights and our regulations infringing on us constantly and as we're doing things trying to be more uh, self-reliant uh, and sustain our own uh, food supply things like that um, wow you know and of course there's this craziness of all these shortages that they were talking about and uh, it's all a factor now in the last video you heard me talking about do I raise meat birds? And, uh, you know, after watching the Sprague River homestead people, uh, it's kind of causing me to start thinking about it a little more, but not there yet. But, uh, uh, but in the meantime, uh, <laughs> I'm going to change the subject, take you out to my windy property here, and show you what I'm going to be doing and where I'm going. i got to go to Home Depot again and buy some PVC pipe but let me show you why so I'm coming up on my uh, conventional garden here which uh, already I'm thinking about non-conventional ideas and this is a uh, our new regular garden but we really want to do beans peas and, and sugar peas and uh, or sugar the, the pod kind of food so you can see I've got these stakes in here and what I'm going to do is put a, um, a trellis system along this edge 
but I think I'm going to do hydroponics again. I'm going to run from this side all the way down here, very low to the ground, um, but at a 3% slope, a NFT um, hydroponic system. And what that'll be is right here, just like the greenhouse, I'll have a hole where I have a tank. I'll do like another 37, 38 gallon tote into the ground. Now I help keep the water cool and use a, a three inch pipe. I'd go with four, but I already got some three inch pipe here already. And uh, ideally I'd do four because the root system in, a, in peas and beans are pretty extensive and they can clog up your pipe. So the solution to that is I'm going to separate my holes farther apart than I would normally do. Anyway, so we're going to run a 25 foot, it's about 25 feet that I want to do in here at a 3% slope and, and pump nutrients through the pipe. There'll be two inch holes every four feet so, or so. Um, darn wind. Sorry about the wind. I really can't do much about it. Anyway, and uh, uh, put that next to this trellis. And so uh, you'll basically uh, pump water directly into the pipe. The pipe will act like a, a little river inside all the way to the end, and it'll be uh, uh, pumped back up to uh, uh, the beginning again and cycle, just like we're doing with the uh, Dutch buckets. So, <laughs> anyway, the benefits is less weeds, faster growth, and uh, yeah, the big thing, and less, uh, and less issues with uh, critters. Uh, you'll still have some out here because it's outdoors, but anyway, uh, so I've got my I found enough stakes to do my trellis uh, And so I got that ready. So next thing I'm going to do is today Gosh, this wind um, Is go to uh, Home Depot pick up some more pipe I'm gonna do this with a three inch pipe instead of four just because Buying one less pipe would be kind of nice. I have to buy three 10 footers. And, uh, you know, just bite the bullet, I guess. I might go to four inch pipe. I'll see what the price is. And, uh, I, I like to have that built by this weekend. Uh, we've already started our seeds. And, uh, basically, I'll be using the two inch uh, net cups in it. And uh, the only difference is it'll be outdoors. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> so, uh, right after this, I'm going to be leaving to go uh, to uh, go to Home Depot and get get the materials. All right, guys, I just got back from Home Depot, and I did uh, pick up. I'm going to stay with a three-inch pipe, just because I already have some of the fittings and stuff, and I may regret that a little bit. But uh, uh, I did pick up. A little bit more uh, uh, feeder line for uh, pumping the water back to uh, the top of the uh, uh, hydroponic system and uh, we'll probably start working that tomorrow uh, I'll probably put some stakes in today and uh, by this weekend we should have this up and running I still got to order a pump so anyway guys I want to thank you very much for uh, watching we're gonna wrap it up here Please take the time to like and subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wide world. And if you have an opinion about the future of homesteading and being self-reliant and what your plans are, some of your turmoils you may have had, or maybe you're just planning on just staying where you are, uh, <clears throat> let us know in the comments. I want to hear, hear what's going on with you and so we can talk about it more. So guys... Be safe. Thanks for watching. Until next time, bye now. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.